Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev, and in this video we're going to be covering dropping columns from a table. We're going to be answering the following questions. So can we drop multiple columns from a table within the same execution? Can we drop a column that is referenced in a view and what the impact of that would be? Can we drop a computed column? Can we drop a column used within an index, foreign key or primary key? So let's start off. So I have a simple create table statement. And as always, if you would like to follow along, this is available in the description. So we're going to be focusing on the order details table. So I'm just going to execute that to create the tables I want to work with. And then we'll have a look at those results. Now the first thing to say before dropping any columns, it's always important to consider the impact, namely data loss. Once we drop a column, we're not going to be able to recover that data without restoring backups. So it's always best to get that double checked. Now I've never, or I can't remember an instance where I've needed to drop a column within a productionized solution. But often when I'm testing data models that I've put together or actually just developing solutions, then often I will just drop columns from a table. Perhaps I've put them in the wrong object and they need to be moved. So that's typically when I'd use a drop column statement. Anyway, so we have here an order details table. We can see we've got an ID, an order ID related to sort of a, a higher level table, a product category ID, quantity, price, and total excluding VAT. So typically, let's imagine a scenario, let's say we've got the product ID within this column and we've got the product category. It doesn't really belong here because it's something we should be retrieving from the product table or another table along that chain. It's not something we'd, we'd need in here. It's not a fully normalized solution. So let's start off with a simple example by dropping the product category column. So all we're going to do is the columns belong to a table. So we're going to have to alter the table. DBO order details. And then we're just going to write drop and the drop column and the column name of product category. And if we just run that statement there, you can see that's actually executed successfully. And if we look at our order details, we can see that that has been safely removed. That's the only column that's been removed. So the syntax is just alter the table, table name, drop column, and the column name. So you can see how easily it is to actually drop columns, providing you've got the correct permissions. You will need a certain level of permissions to be able to drop columns for a table. And that's all to do with protecting the database. We don't want consumers of data to have those kind of permissions. Now let's have a look at if we wanted to remove multiple columns from the same table. So I'm just going to run the create table again, just to get us back to our previous position. Now let's imagine we want to remove the product category ID and the product ID. So can we simply just instruct SQL Server to drop multiple columns within the same statement? So if I just put a comma after product category and then the product ID column and execute that query and have a look at the results, we can see we've successfully removed multiple columns within the same statement. OK, so we've been able to remove multiple columns from our table and we can see the syntax is quite straightforward. And again, always go back to the impact of removing data. So we've lost product ID and product category from this table that the only way we'd be able to restore would be to rem would be to restore a backup. So it's always important to think of the implications. We'll now move on to having a look at when those columns actually mean something. So perhaps they're within another object such as a view or an index. So again, let's start off by just restoring the table, which is quite straightforward for me because it's, it's only a small table we're using here as an example. Um, and we're going to be creating a view 
uh, called VW Orders. And it's going to be combining the orders ID and the order details table on order ID, picking up some attributes from each table. So if I create that view now, and we can see that product category is actually part of that view. Now if I go back here, and I actually want to, first of all, let's just have a look at what that view looks like. That's VW orders. So we can see we've got those columns there and we've got product category. Now we couldn't alter the view here, so we can't have a syntax of alter view. Let's change this to the view name and drop column. So that syntax wouldn't work. We'd have to alter view and write out uh, our table definition again as we've got here. We'd have to do an alter view up here and then just remove that that column. But let's imagine we we aren't aware of all the views that contain this column. So we're, we're simply focusing on the table and we're going to be dropping that column from the table and what impact that would have on the view. Now if you know what impact this is going to have, let me know in the comments below before I go through this demonstration and see if you get this right. So is the, t is the column going to be actually dropped from the table or are we going to get an error? So we're going to go back to our original, we're altering the table and we're dropping the column product category and we know that product category is going to be used within that view. So if we alter this table now and drop that column, we can see that's been executed successfully. And if we have a look in our order details table, that's not a problem. We can query that table fine. But remember that column is actually referenced within this view. So if we have a look at running this query now, we'll see we now get an error because the view definition contains a column that no longer exists in the table. Now, if we want to add a layer of protection to our views, so we don't end up in these kind of situations, there is a thing called schema binding, which we can add to our views, which would prevent this from actually being dropped. And I do have a video on that available on my channel. I'll put a link in the top right coming up now where you can go and check that out. So the moral of removing columns from tables that could be in views is it's better to check. You can add that layer of protection with schema binding to prevent this kind of things happening. But if you see this error to say there's an invalid column name within a view, the likely cause is, is because one of the underlying columns has been dropped. Now again, let's go back and restore our table. Uh, and now we're going to have a look at computed columns. So if you're not familiar with computed columns, it's a, a column as an expression. So we can see here we've got this column called total excluding VAT. And how that's made up of is quantity multiplied by price. And that's good because it saves us having to do that work within the database itself. So if I was to update the quantity column or the price column, that value is going to automatically compute for us. There's a bit more detail to it to that, but hopefully you get that idea. So this column effectively has a, de a dependency on two other columns. But let's have a look at if we can drop our total excluding that column and if we get any errors. So we've got the table. We're just going to change our, our drop column this time to total excluding that and if we execute this now that's been executed successfully and we can see our order details so again there's nothing there protecting that column from being dropped again let's restore and then let's take a look at indexes so I'm just going to create a very simple index, non-clustered index on the product category 
column. Just go ahead and create that. That's been done. And now let's have a look if that prevents us from actually dropping this column. So again, let's try and execute this query. Now we're going to get errors. So indexes are important, a part of database relational management systems, and they need to be well protected. So you can't actually drop columns that are part of indexes. To drop this column, we'd actually need to remove or alter this index first of all, um, and then we'd be able to drop that column because then there'd be no dependency there. So any column that is used within an index cannot be dropped, it is protected. Now let's have a look at our constraints. So first of all, foreign keys. So I'll just have a look at our create table statement. And we can see here we've got order ID, which is a, a foreign key to our, our orders table. So let's have a look what happens if we were to try and drop our order ID from our order details table. And again, we'd get an error to say there's a dependency here. You cannot complete this drop column because one or more objects access this column. And foreign keys are interesting during a development stage of a database. You'll often see um, DBAs, SQL developers, or, or data engineers that are building the objects. Once they're going through the development phase, if you put in foreign keys too early, you'll often see them pulling their hair out exactly because of this reason. You cannot, you've created a dependency between two tables, so you can't drop that table, you can't drop any columns until that dependency chain has broken uh, to protect referential integrity. Uh, and last of all, we have the order details ID which is the primary key column on the order details table. And if we try and drop that column, I'm sure you know by now, again, this is gonna give us an error, similar to the error we have with the foreign key, just the name of the primary key object instead. Really hope you have enjoyed that video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and if there's any other videos on data engineering or data analysis you'd like to see please do get in contact. The key takeaway from this video is not now that you know how to drop columns, you go and do it, but you understand the impact. Um, so when you, the need arises for you to drop a column, you've got that syntax available uh, and you understand the impacts of other objects. Thanks a lot for watching.